With ever-increasing home prices, a lot of long-time homeowners with significant equity ask themselves, how can I help my adult children get into their first home without putting significant financial stress on myself? For a lot of people, it no longer makes sense to wait until they're passing to help their children financially, to give them access to whatever assets that you may have been able to acquire. They're looking to help their kids now get into that first home and start their own path on home ownership and asset appreciation. So in today's video, we're going to talk about four methods that you can use to assist your adult kids and to get into their first home. And number four, you probably haven't heard of before. So you're going to want to stay until the end of the video. So let's get to it. So there are three primary ways that people have traditionally accessed their assets. That's hard to say, so I had to slow down to say it. There are three ways that people access their assets to assist their adult kids in getting that down payment to buy their first home. And the first one is good old cash and or cash equivalent stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And this has the benefits of simplicity. It gives you complete control of, of when you do it, how you do it. But the drawbacks of using cash are you know, also pretty obvious. If you are selling cash equivalents, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, things like that, you could be subject to paying capital gains taxes on those sales. And that may not be desirable for you, right? The second aspect or potential drawback is how that changes your reserves position. So you may feel that you're depleting a lot of your cash and that may make you feel uncomfortable or you simply may not have that much cash or cash equivalents to be able to access. So if you have the access and you're willing to do it and, and the tax implications aren't too significant for you, cash is always king. But if that's not an option and it isn't for a lot of people, well, the second method is really what I see most people do. And that's taking out a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan. And these are essentially just second mortgages on the home. Now, the benefits of this is they tend to be a little bit simpler to get than a first mortgage. And it just gives you access to the equity in the home. But the drawback to that is that this is now a second loan on your house. This is a new payment you have to make every month. And depending on where you are in your life journey, you may not want to increase your monthly payment. And the interest rate on these second mortgages tend to be a little bit higher and sometimes significantly higher than on a first mortgage. So you have to consider how that impacts your budget and are you willing to make that monthly payment? but it does give you access to cash and it is not overly difficult to do if you are in a strong uh, equity position, strong mortgage history, and you have the income to show the bank that you can make the payments on this loan. So that is one of the ways that people traditionally have done it. But you know, with the higher interest rate environment that we have been in lately, this isn't as appealing to a lot of people as it was in the past. A third way that I'm increasingly seeing people use, especially if they are in their early 60s or beyond helping their adult kids get into the housing market, and you have to remember the average age of first time home buyers is creeping up to close to 40. And that's just really due to the increased cost and expense of buying a home. But if you are a homeowner and you're in your early 60s, you can use what is called a home equity conversion mortgage or more commonly known as a reverse mortgage. Now the benefits of a reverse mortgage are that you don't have to qualify with income. There are no income requirements. It's really an equity based loan. And as long as you can show that you have the money to maintain the house, it is usually pretty simple to get. Now you can access uh, these type of loans either with monthly installment payments that the company will make to you, or you can take it out as a lump sum. It just depends on what you want to do. Now the drawback to reverse mortgages is first, the upfront cost for a reverse mortgage is higher than a home equity line of credit typically. 
The second thing is you have to be at least 62 years old to access this financial tool. So if you're say in your 50s, late 40s, this is not going to be an option for you. The third thing is that this loan does not have any repayments during the life of a loan. Any interest that is accrued is added to the principal balance. So that balance, say you did a reverse mortgage for $100,000 and over time that balance is going to grow because your interest is just going to be added on. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing if you assume that while your balance is growing, the value of the house is also growing. But you have to know that's what they're doing, right? So you don't have to ever make a payment on this uh, loan until I think 30 years or until you move out or sell the property. So if you say in 15, 20 years need to move to an adult care community and you move out of the home, you can't keep the home for your family. You have to uh, either sell it or refinance it or pay off that loan some home, that somehow, that, that reverse mortgage. So it is an option, but the drawback is, is primarily for most people, the age requirement. So if you're not into your 60s, this is probably, well, it's definitely not gonna be an option for you. Now, the fourth method is relatively new and a lot of people haven't heard of it and it's called a home equity investment. There are companies out there that will essentially make an investment in the future growth in the appreciation of the value of your home. So what does that mean? That essentially means that from the day you take the investment, any appreciation that occurs, the investor will get part of that appreciation. Now, it is important to note that they do not share in your current equity. So for example, if you have a home, it's worth a million dollars, you own it outright, you have a million dollars in equity. The investor does not share in that million dollars of equity. Now, you keep the home, you take the investment, say you take $100,000 and in exchange for $100,000 from the investor, you agree to share 20% of the future growth in the equity of the home. So if you kept this loan, say for another or this investment, it's not a loan. If you take the keep the investment for 10 years and say the value of the property goes up to 1.5 million. Well, that increase in value is now $500,000. And say for that $100,000 uh, initial investment, they are taking 20% of that growth. Well, if you settle the investment in 10 years, you have to pay them back their original investment, $100,000, and 20% of the growth, which is 20% of 500,000 is an additional $100,000. So they are taking a percentage of that growth and their percentages can range anywhere from typically about 10% as a minimum up to about 40%. And it varies depending on how much you're asking for as an investment, how much equity you have in the property currently, uh, you know, your mortgage payment history, if you have had any challenges, things like that will impact what percentage share they, they take. Now, the other unique things about this is that if the value of the property goes down when you're ready to settle up, they share in that loss too. This is completely different than a line of credit or any other type of mor uh, mortgage. This is an investment they're making. So if the investment goes down, they lose just as well as you do. So if the value of your property, uh, your equity position drops from $1 million to $900,000, well, there's $100,000 loss. If they're sharing in 20% of the change in the, the equity in the home, they share in that 100,000 loss by $20,000. So if you were to settle up, they would get their $100,000 initial investment, but oh, we're going to deduct 20,000 from that because that was the loss in your home. That is a great aspect of this. The other great aspect is there's no interest. So your home is not earning, you know, being subject to interest payments like a home equity conversion mortgage. And there are no monthly payments because it's not a loan they are sh literally sharing in that future equity. So this is a new option. It's not 
you know, that well known. So there are four companies that I'm aware of that do this and they're in no particular order, but they are HomeTap, Unlock, Point, and Unison. And I will put their website information in the video description below. If you're interested in this type of concept, please go to the individual investors and find out their specific requirements their terms, their conditions. I am just giving you a 50,000 foot concept as to how it works, but all of the investors have their own terms and conditions. So please make sure you do that. So I did another mortgage related video a little while ago on mistakes people often make managing their mortgages. So I will link that here. You know, I never know where it's gonna pop up here. I never have figured that out, but it'll be linked somewhere here. If you have any questions about anything that I covered, in today's video, you know what to do. Drop me a text, give me a call, send me an email. Contact information is in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to show it to other people like yourselves. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you know each and every time I drop a new video and I'll catch you in the next video.